1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Welcome to Casting Cares, a weekly radio show devoted to life issues and relationships. Your hosts, Pastor Gerald and Merrill Lee Hagerman, are here to answer your questions from God's Word. Email your questions to castingcaresradio.com. So grab a cup of coffee, turn up the radio, and let's get started. Well, good morning. This is Pastor Gerald Hagerman. This is Marilee. And we want to welcome you to Casting Cares. Happy New Year. As this is the first Saturday in the new year, we are so glad that you've tuned in. And this program is dedicated to your questions on life issues and relationships. Some of you out there cannot get to a pastor. You'd like to make an appointment, but maybe you're new in an area. You don't have a pastor that you can turn to. Or maybe you're just embarrassed to talk to your pastor about certain situations. That's why this program is here. It's for those of you that cannot get to a pastor or feel uncomfortable talking to a pastor that you can go ahead and send your question to us. And if you desire, you can keep your question anonymous. We will not mention your city, your state, your name. But here's one thing that you need to remember. Whatever you're facing, other people out there are facing. So we really appreciate it when you take the time to write us and give us your questions. And uh, if you uh, desire to do that, write us at castingcaresradio.com. Again, castingcaresradio.com, or you can go on Facebook, and we encourage you to become our friends on Facebook. It's Casting Cares Radio, and every week we have a chime-in question, which we'll get to in a little while here, and we allow uh, comments to be made. All of our programs are archived, so you can go back and pick them up again, but we're really, really glad that you tuned in. And as we begin this new year, Marilee and I want to give you a special opportunity This is something that's going to be an absolute blast. It's going to be a fun time in September of this year, and you can leave from anywhere in the country. We will rendezvous together, but Marilee and I are hosting a church trip to Ireland, and it's nine days from September 19th through the 27th, and if you're interested... Please just email us and say, hey, I want more information. You can see our brochures online, but we'll be happy to talk with you as well. Uh, So send us your phone number on uh, castingcaresradio.com, and we will talk to you about that. Well, Marilee, shall we get to our first question? We should. And, Gerald, we have some really interesting ones this time. And uh, for those of you out there, you're going to want to turn up your, your dial because these questions are quite amazing. It's a good way to start off the new year, though. Uh, with some things that we haven't discussed before. So what have we got, Gerald? All right. Well, here's the first question that we have. First, let me say I appreciate all that God is doing with your ministry. My question is, I'm 18 years older than my fiance. We have been together for six years. We are both Christians. We would like to marry. The problem is my children. They will not accept us. Accept this. They are grown adults, age 30 and 34, We want to do what is right in God's eyes. Please give us advice, and thank you very much. Well, it's an interesting situation. Here you have a couple, and it it sounds like she is the one that's 18 years older than he is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that probably puts him not too far apart from how old her kids are, and her kids are having an issue with this. Which is understandable. I mean, to to have to have somebody that be 18 years uh, younger than your mom would be a hard thing to deal with. But what I can say here, Gerald, is they have been together six years and it sounds like they're in love with each other. Uh, you know, overseas, this kind of thing happens all the time. You see an older man marrying a younger woman constantly. In fact, it's it's very, you know, accepted over there. Well, this is the other way around. This and, is an older woman marrying a younger man. And yeah, and, and that's what I was going to say. And then over here, we see this happening and they call them actually cougars that go after the younger guys. And, uh, you know, overseas, it's the opposite. The men go after the younger women. And well, of course, it's in the United States, too. But Anyway, as far as like they want to do what's right in the sight of God, it sounds like they have a relationship. And I'm I'm imagining probably that it's more serious than anybody wants to know. And if they want right standing in God's eyes, they do need to marry. 
Uh, but she needs to know that with that's going to come the penalty of problems with her kids. Well, and I think that's the thing. Number one, nobody can hear from the Lord except the people who are directly involved. And I actually do know a couple that it is this way, and they're very happy together, you know, and they're a part of a church family, and they're walking with the Lord, and I'm not quite sure how much younger he is, but I know he is considerably younger. And I've had the opposite situation Mm -hmm. where a man has married someone much younger than them. And, you know, merely both you and I understand that as an adult, when you get married and you have grown children, there there are going to be issues that go along with that. Yeah, you know, I was talking to somebody that married somebody quite a bit younger than they were, and they said, you know, the hardest thing of being married to them is they don't remember current events that you lived through. <laughs> That's right. They don't like the same songs that, you know, you look back the oldies, but goodies, they have not a clue what you're listening to. They're like, they never heard them before. And there's just that disconnect with 18 years or 15 years or whatever's there that they weren't living then. <laughs> That's right. So there are those issues you're going to have to work well, through. And, you know, too, there's other issues that maybe aren't there now, but are going to be there, you know, at a certain time. For instance, as you eight, get older, 18 years, one person's going to turn 50, the other person's going to be 32. That's when it starts getting, I think, the hardest. Yes. Or when that person turns 60, the other person's 42. You know, so we see that. I I remember once uh, we were on a mission trip somewhere. And remember, we saw this guy with this woman who was another missionary, not related to us at all. I didn't know them at all, but we both arrived at the airport early. And I almost said something to him about how uh, his mom was with him. Well, yes, fortunately, so before <laughs> I opened my mouth, which hallelujah, thank you, Lord, that I did not open my mouth, I discovered that that was his wife. But clearly, she was much older than he was. So, you know, when, you, when you're when you involved in that situation, you just have to understand there are going to be people who are, are going to say things. It's going to be a different situation. Uh, you know, those types of things. You know, in Proverbs chapter two, it says, if you receive my words and treasure my commandments within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, if you will cry out for discernment and you will lift your voice up for understanding, if you will seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God for the Lord will give wisdom His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. And only God can give you sound wisdom in this relationship. And if if you're walking with the Lord, you're both Christians, and you prayed about it, and you feel like you should get married, then that's what you have to go by. Make sure that you're having sound wisdom from God, not from your family, not from other people talking to you, but from God. Is this what God would want you to do is marry this person? And Marilee, you know, for our listeners, if you've just tuned in, both Marilee and I were married for 31 years to our first spouses. Both of them died of cancer. And now we've been married for three years. So, Marilee, we end up talking to lots of couples who are in our situation who are getting married, and they have adult children. And they're, I'd say more times than not, the adult children Uh, have opinions and can be a problem Mm -hmm. in these situations. But, you know, one of the things that we share with people is that, you know what, your adult children, they have their families, you know, they have their their situations where they go home to someone at night. Unless you've been married and uh, find yourself years later single again, you don't know what that's like. And so one of the things that the kids need to come to place with, especially as adult kids, you know, in their 30s are, is respecting mom or respecting dad, respecting the choices that they have made and then choosing, you know, that, hey, you know, this this is the life that they have chosen. Either I can be a part of it 
Right. Or I can cause so much trouble, uh, I'm not going to be a part of exactly. it. And the reality is, it sounds like they've been together six years. So uh, evidently, it's nothing that's going to be going away in, you know, three months. So I would I would definitely present this before the Lord. I would talk to God about it and let him be my sound advice in this situation. I don't know what the answer is with this, Gerald. <laughs> it's easy to say, walk away and find someone your own age, but... Evidently, they don't want to. Yeah, so, and they found uh, someone else. They need to be right before God's eyes. And so just know that you're going to be entering into some headaches with your kids. But, you know, life's not perfect. Isn't That's it? right. That's right. And so you the bottom line is you guys have to hear from God. If it's the Lord and you feel it's that way, then you move forward in your in your life. I, I, I Well, I also want to say, too, that there is. Many people out there that just because they're 18 years younger doesn't mean that they are 18 years more no. mature than the other person well, and I, vice versa, you know, I, I, and it's not 18 years, but I do know a couple where <laughs> she's like eight, nine years older than he is. You would never know it yeah. because he was always older acting, acting and, and she, she was looks younger. very young. In you action. would never dream that they're not even the same age. Exactly. So, I know for myself, you know, I found myself single at 51 years old. There was one thing I did not want to do. I didn't want to marry somebody younger than me. (laughs) I didn't want to marry someone who had kids the same age as my grandchildren or younger, for goodness sakes. But again, there are other people. I know people that have kids when they're 50 or 60 years old. So uh, that's the wonderful thing about our Lord that he is able to meet us in all of our life situation. But it is our chime in question. So what do you think about this? A big age difference in getting married. We want to hear you. Both Christians. That's right. Is it okay to get married? And, and, you know, there may be some situations out there of Christians who are this this (laughs) age difference that could help this couple. So if that's you, uh, please write us so that you can be an encouragement to other people. Uh, If you've had a hard time with it, a good time, whatever it is. Run as fast as you can. Don't do it. Write that too. Yeah, it is our chime in question for today. You send that to Casting cares radio.com and uh, also you can go on facebook for that chime in question and merely why we're talking about chime in questions one of our chime in questions for some from some time ago is this is it right for a married person to post a bunch of pictures of just themselves on facebook i remember that person yes, writing in uh, that. That and what great? did they answer back well, on that here's Joe? what sandra wrote I don't know whether it's right or wrong, but it does seem odd. He or she must not feel very married. I would feel offended if I was being left out. Are other people in the pictures, or are they strictly of himself or herself? Brad writes, well, it's perfectly fine if the married person's spouse doesn't mind. Why wouldn't it be? And Sherry said, I am married, and I do it all the time. I'm not trying to show off or anything, but just have fun. My husband takes the pictures for me. I never thought of it. And and uh, Ronald writes, and Sherry does it well and tasteful. <laughs> no. And so, again, that's our chime-in question. Our chime-in question for today is, what about when there is a big age difference between the couple that's getting married, and how do you deal and respond with that? So, again, we want to hear your responses. CastingCaresRadio.com. Uh, now, our next question, Marilee, is a long question. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this for a number of years. We've never faced one exactly like this, that's for sure. So here's why I'm going to read it. I am traumatized after being beaten within an inch of my life. Why won't the police arrest the guy? I am traumatized after being beaten within an inch of my life. And all I did was report a crime. A crime was committed, and I reported it. Uh, I sent a 17-year-old to prison for 22 years for being in bed with my 15-year-old daughter. He was perverted. He uh, he, He just turned 17, and he was four months older than, or four at 14 months older than her. My daughter said it was her idea. I told her she she should have said no. The law is the law. My daughter had to be homeschooled because after he went to jail, she was getting bullied at school. But that's another story. Fifteen is a child. She cannot consent. 
after he found out, when he gets out, he will be a sex offender on the registry and will have to wear a Monte bracelet. So when he found that out, he committed suicide in Mm. prison after serving seven years. I believe in all the laws, and I was just reporting the law. uh, As a father, I, I had to do this. After this person killed himself, his dad came after me. I was in the bathroom at the gym, and he came in when no one else was there, forced the door shut, took a baseball bat to my mouth, and beat me within an inch of my life. I have four missing teeth. I have a broken jaw, two black eyes, broken ribs, broken nose, internal bleeding, stomach, spent three weeks in, in, in the hospital, three days in a coma. I just got out of ICU. The police went to arrest him, but he's nowhere to be found. They said all they can do is issue a, a, a warrant. Why can't they find him? I asked the police to do a search, put his picture up, ask people to find him. But they said they only do that with murders and not assaults since I'm alive. If he disappeared, there's nothing they can do with that until he comes home. The police thinks he will never come home and they won't find him unless he's pulled over. How can I put his picture out in the news and the paper for assault? Is there nothing that I can do to make this person go to jail? Well, that, gosh, you know, Gerald, when we first read that, I thought, how do you answer something like that? And and the reality is there's just not an easy answer. Uh, because as an outsider looking into the problem, I, I mean, I can't imagine sending a 17-year-old boy to jail for 22 years either. You know, I think that this was, was a typo. I think the guy was 22. Okay. And he got sent to jail for 17 years. Okay. I think well, that's either what way, the, because it's a long at time. 17, he would have still been a minor himself. So I think those laws would have okay. been different. So I, I think I misread it there. I think he was actually 22 years old uh, when with he a did it with a 15 year old. And he went that, to jail for 17 years. That's why years. he had to wear, was going to be a registered sex offender. Oh, okay. Well, and you know, with even with, even with anything like that, when you're looking at something, when it comes to the law and uh, people having a sentence and then, you know, unfortunately this man committing suicide took, took his life. Yeah. In, in jail. Uh, and the tragedy then of having, you know, this man have to face being, you know, beat up and being threatened within, you know, an inch of his life. And, you know, uh, it, it's sad, but the only thing that we can come up with now is for this man that suffered this wrong he has got to let go of it. That's right. Yeah, because the whole situation is a tra- is a, a tragic situation, and but if he continues to live in this, this will Destroy eat him, him alive. And we can see that it's already just a domino effect of destroying lives. You know, the girl's life is destroyed. She she had to go through that. the The boy commits suicide. Is in jail. The the dad is bitter because he feels like it was unjust. And so he comes after the father, beats the father within an inch of his life. It's just a continual destruction of dominoes that is happening here. And something's got to stop and that's, before someone else dies. That's right. And that's where we have to come to the Lord and surrender our lives to the Lord. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world where there is rape and pain and murder and all of these things that end up taking place in life. But here's the wonderful thing. The entire Bible is a book of redemption that no matter where you are and no matter what has happened to you, you can move forward. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that the root of bitterness is defiles many and this is where merely and we we face this quite often because in this situation you know i mean i was a dad i had a daughter i mean if a if an older person violated my daughter like that i mean you're a dad you know he did what was right by contacting the authorities a crime was committed But now all of this emotional trauma and now a physical attack upon him, he needs, this dad 
needs to surrender to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't always understand what happens, but I need you to help me at this point. I need your protection over my family. I need your help in overcoming even the bitterness that I have against this person whose family, uh, you know, seduced my daughter, who's who you physically attacked me. Now, Gerald, we have to turn to the word when it gets to be this bad and this dark of a situation in everything. We have to go back to the word. And it says here in James chapter three, verse 14, it says, but if you have bitter envy, boasting, self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but it's earthly, sensual and demonic. Therefore, where there's envy and self-seeking, confusion will be there with everything that there is. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle. And this is what I think is for him because he's writing into a Christian radio program. So I'm assuming this man is a Christian willing to yield, willing to stop, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy, now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And I think that he has to come to peace with himself, to peace with being beat up. And if anything else, you know, the Bible says if someone's wronged us, if they smack us on the cheek, turn the other cheek. This man's son committed suicide and, and he is hurting in the only way he knows how to express it. And, and the thing is, forgiveness and people get all confused because immediately you go, well, how could you forgive in this situation? We, we, we have some friends who are in the ministry who a a young man actually murdered their daughter. How do you forgive in those situations? And, and here's the deal that we have to understand about forgiveness. Forgiveness is by faith. It is a decision. We don't even have to feel like forgiving that person. We don't have to think that we're going to become friends with that person or even have anything to do with that person. But as often as the ugly head of bitterness rises up, we by faith say, Lord, I forgive. Because the Lord in his prayer, he writes this, In the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And as soon as that prayer is over and Jesus said, Amen, then he reiterates forgiveness For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. In the book of Colossians, and I just uh, finished teaching this, and again, if you want to pick up any of our teachings off the Bible, you can go to our internet site at joshuasprings.org, and all the entire Bible's there. So on any chapter, you can for free listen to it, and it says this, Uh, on uh, forgiveness, uh, it says in verse number 13, in Colossians 3, 13, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave, so you also must do. So again, don't get it confused with, I can't forgive because I don't feel like forgiving. The Lord never says that we have to feel like forgiving, he simply lays out that we must choose to forgive and then take that step to do it. And as we do that, then amazingly, one day that forgiveness, but here's the problem. If you don't forgive, then that bitterness that is in your heart will defile many. It won't hurt that guy that's out there that beat you with a baseball bat. You know, wherever he's hiding out, another state, maybe he's moved on, got a whole nother life or whatever, or maybe he's down in Mexico, he's fled the country altogether. You're not, by your bitterness, ruining his life. But as you said, you've got some other kids 
You may have a, a spouse, you have other family members, you have friends. And if you don't deal with that bitterness in your heart, you will defile them, the ones that you love the most by your bitterness, and you must forgive. And it's as simple as this. No, you don't have to feel like it. You don't even have to want to. It is a decision of faith. Lord, I forgive. You know, and I do want to speak to you also, and that <clears throat> vengeance is not yours. Vengeance is God's. That's and right. you, the best thing that you can be doing is praying for this man and realize that his future is hell. Realize his future is a total um, eternal life without Jesus Christ and pray for his salvation because evidently this man is driven by uh, forces that are dark and the, you know, underworld is promoting him to do something to cause harm upon you and to take out his wrath upon you. And I'm going to leave you with this verse and it says, vengeance is mine and recompense. Their foot will slip in due time for the day of calamity will be at hand and the things will come upon them for the Lord will judge his people and have compassion on his servants. That's right. And so vengeance, let it go. God knows how to deal with someone like that. I wouldn't seek to find him. I wouldn't continue to put out a, a warrant for his arrest. I would turn him over to the Lord and say, God, I can't deal with yeah. him. You deal with him. That's right. And uh, so we hope that that helps. And again, we're we very sorry. Yes, we pray for this family and the whole situation that they're facing. Hey, half hour is gone. God bless you. Happy New Year. Go to church and love Jesus. Thanks for tuning in to Casting Cares. Pastor Gerald and Mary Lee will be here next week at the same time to answer more of your questions on life issues and relationships. Email questions to castingcaresradio.com. And remember 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you.